way, uh, Garrett, do you have the, the, the tweet from Matt Prem who covers Oregon? I sent that to you. Look at this note. This is a Matt who covers Oregon. He's a, a Pac-12 guy. I've seen some of his feed, but I thought this was pretty cool. And this is a note about since the death, of course, of college football with USC and UCLA, the Pac-12 teams are dead, and, and they have work to do. But since that announcement, Oregon has landed its highest-rated quarterback commit, the number two overall player in the 2023 football class, Dante Moore, and the number two player ever for them in basketball, and the number seven overall player in the 2023 basketball class. I think this was maybe yesterday in Kwame Evans Jr. Oregon's doing just fine, and I appreciate Matt with that knowledge. That doesn't mean that that means they're in later on or anyone else is right now wondering if they're in, but I thought it's great to see that because we put that up about what Baylor's done or some other schools have done as well. Yeah, it's great. The Big Ten will really enjoy that. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Jeez. No, that's that's great for the Ducks. I mean, um, I think you know one thing that people got wrong initially with NIL was that a school like Oregon would be like the poster boy of just throwing Nike money around, and that hasn't really been the case as far as I can tell. Like I'm sure they've thrown some around, but it hasn't been this egregious. That, that's more, that was more Miami originally. Well, was the egregious like we're gonna abuse the rules and we don't care and you can't stop okay. us. So one of the things uh, people need to know about Phil Knight is he did not build Nike to where it was by being just like, woo, no, you know, yeah. he went to Magic Johnson first. And then he like, and then when Nike wasn't growing, he went to Michael Jordan and said, because yeah, Michael wanted Adidas. And that's what he, who he wanted to be with. And he said, no, Nike can be your brand. And then it, it exploded. So he's not just picking, like, he's not just going to people because if he goes to a recruit and that guy winds up sucking and he's sponsored by Nike, he's already had to deal with that with basketball i'm sure he knows how that works out that's law that's a sunk cost on somebody who didn't work out for your brand yep so you know they haven't been i think a lot of the the fear mongering really hasn't happened at all i mean other than you know arguably miami here and there or you know i know there's been what you want to say about tennessee or te you know whoever's like had more of a publicized deal that's been made and even still it's not like it's been everybody on the team i mean the only thing that we've seen like that has been like a texas tech style deal where everybody gets this and we're going to also get some extra you know walk on some money as well but but yeah i mean uh oregon's a uh, great program and there's reason to believe that they're going to be one of those that's going to you know keep flying high no matter what happens uh with conferences I, I think that they're a team that you can't feel like you don't need to lose any sleep but I think you're losing a lot less sleep than pretty much all of your brothers and sisters in the Pac-12 right now, you know? Speaking of one of them, Oregon, this is from Joel, who's a UCF fan. Uh, Oregon will be more relevant in a different conference than USC and UCLA will be in football in the Big Ten. That remain that's, that, that mean, like, I'm not going to say that's completely wrong. You never no, but know. like, look, it's interesting if, if you give yourself a chance, like, say the Big Ten decides that world domination stops at 16. Like, they're good. Plus and Notre Dame. Max. Plus Notre Dame. Okay. But, like, they don't yeah. – they decide that Oregon and Washington don't, uh, you know, blow their skirt up all that much. So, they – Oregon's there. Oregon now has a chance. If you look to the Big 12, one of the reasons the Big 12 is excited that Oklahoma and Texas are leaving is – there's no historical, you know, albatross around your neck anymore. It is wide open for everybody. Yep. It is open for everybody. If you are, look, even to a, a very lower extent, Kansas, you know, can look and go, that's Oklahoma and Texas Mountain. They don't know. They climb Somebody's the, going to be elite, yeah. and it's going to be sustainable. But is it going to be of, one, two, or three teams, and who will it be? Yeah. I, I don't mean this in any political type of way or anything like that, but it almost seems like it's the, the vision of what America is, of, like, it's equal for everybody, and yeah. everything's just, it's going to be like that, whereas it has been more like a reality, where it's like there's a couple of the big dogs at the very top of it that get most of the money and they kind of control things, and they, you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, and if you beat them five years in a row, they're going to find a way to... Exactly, exactly right. But, yeah, no, it's more... It's, it's more of like yeah this this almost idyllic dream of everybody's on the same exact plane is what you're talking about whereas mm -hmm. the conferences the way they have been aligned is yes it's very you know it's not weighted uh equally uh, all the way through but yeah if oregon were to jump into the big 12 and we're just riffing here we're not reporting anything but if that were to happen yeah i think they could look i, I and i'm sure there would be their number of fans who feel like they're better and whatever but i do think historically they'd pretty much be on the same plane and i think it makes for some damn good sports i mean i really do but i understand their reasoning and why they are not uh, enticed to go and, and jump right into that they've got you know 
what appears to be uh, not necessarily offers, but multiple options in front of them. You know, whether it's stay right what, what you're doing and, you know, now you don't even have the pesky L.A. schools to worry about at this point. But then there's others that wonder if that hurts them because they no longer have those L.A. schools to kind of, you know, hey, we're going to be down in L.A. soon. Mm -hmm. um, so whether that hurts or hinders them, that remains to be seen. But, yeah, they're they're the top. They're arguably the top brand now. And if they were to, you know, look elsewhere, sure, there's that Big Ten option that may or may not really be there. We don't really quite know that. Um, obviously, there's no offer because if there was, we'd have already heard something. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if there's an offer in a couple years – uh, and then the Big 12, obviously, would love to have them, I think. So, yeah, I mean, they're sitting there um, not too worried about not having a future, but where that future is, that's the big question. I want to bring something up about Alabama, uh, the, the fact that they used to play a lot of their games. Somebody put this up, uh, Jason. Bama didn't even play all their home games in Tuscaloosa back in the day. They had Bryant-Denny, and, of course, they have, uh, they have the, the, the one in Birmingham, and then, of course, Tuscaloosa. Arkansas still does that, I believe, don't they? If you're an Arkansas fan, don't they have War Memorial and uh, in Little Rock that on occasion they'll play their games there? And, of course, they have uh, the, the, the stadium in their home base in hometown of uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas. I think that Arkansas still on occasion plays a game in Little Rock, Arkansas. War Memorial Stadium, I believe. I don't know who it is against, but I still think that they had a deal that runs for a couple of more years into 2024. I looked that up earlier. Now, when we come back, uh, uh, Sam Webb.